For this video, you and I are going to create a cinematic black and white template that we can apply to all of our travel and landscape photographs. I'm going to start this by saying I'm kind of all about efficiency when it comes to editing. And don't get me wrong, I dig Luminar AI. It makes so many things quite simple and easy to do, even fun maybe. But that being said, I still think it's more fun being out exploring and creating photographs than sitting in front of a computer editing them. Maybe you differ. If so, you should talk to my lovely fiance who would agree with you. She loves editing too. So I have five exercise files loaded into Luminar AI. You can go ahead and download those exercise files in the description of this video. We're going to create a template and you might notice that these landscape images, I actually featured them in our last tutorial. And I talked about creating like a cohesive look uh, across a series of images you might use on a blog or an album or for wall art. So what we have here is kind of a series of photographs that I really like uh, from a travel set that I want to hang up on the wall. But what we're going to do is create a black and white look that we can apply to all the images so when they're put together, they look cohesive. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to select, you can pick any one of these images that you want to work on. We're ultimately going to apply that same look to all of the images. So what I might do is select maybe the widest or the most complicated image. Uh, maybe this one because it's landscape aspect ratio. This one's portrait. Um, we're going to crop them to squares, but for right now, let's just select this one to work on. Now, the first thing that I like to do is if I can, I like starting with a template. Like if there's already a template that gets me close to where I want to be, I'm going to select it. So I'm actually going to select this Noirscape. We said sort of a cinematic look to it. So if you go under templates, because this is a landscape photograph, Luminar is automatically going to suggest landscape templates. I wanted to say presets, but that's a different application. Okay. But we're going to start with this template. Now, just because you start with a template doesn't mean that you have to keep everything, right? So once you jump over to the edit side, we're going to go to step two, where we're going to start customizing the overall look. So now you'll see that anything that's been adjusted is going to have a little dot next to it. So anything that has that dot is basically something that the template has made adjustments to. So let's drop under accent and see if there's anything. Actually, there's nothing I really want to change there. So I'm good there. We don't need to erase anything. Let's go to light. What I think I want for light is I'm actually going to drop the exposure a bit. I'm going to increase highlights and drop shadows. And we're actually going to do the same thing on this side. I like, I like my cinematic black and whites to kind of have a slightly darker look to them with highlights that kind of pop and shadows that kind of drop. That rhymed. Did you like that? I like that. I like it when things rhyme. Okay, this looks awesome actually. And you can tell by dropping exposure and by doing this, we get this nice sort of dark cinematic look to the image. I'm gonna go into curves. We're gonna make a small tweak here. I'm actually gonna pull up from the base. This is just to create a subtle matte look to the shadows as the shadows drop to kind of a gray. I'm gonna create a little bit of extra contrast by pulling down the shadow point. And then I'm going to bring up the midtones and the highlights just a bit. And then I'm going to pull down the white point a little bit. The white point is right up here so that our whites don't go to like a extreme white, essentially. They're kind of going to stay just a little bit under as kind of a, a light gray color. Okay. You can tweak and refine this curve to your liking, to your heart's content. This is about where I like it, though. And we might revise that in just a minute, but for now, let's leave that right there. I'm going to bring my whites down a bit since I'm kind of pulling on this. Let's go whites down and then bring the little bit of highlights back into it. There we go. Okay. So now let's go to structure. For structure, it has a plus 20 amount, which I think is pretty decent. I usually like to keep structure between 20, uh, 10 and 20, just because if you go too high on structure, it ends up looking like these nasty old school HDR images, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm going to just bring structure up a little bit, add a little bit of boost to it. Under black and white, we're going to make some tweaks here. I'm going to pull the blues down. The blues are mainly going to appear in sky tones. So we're going to pull them down a little bit. 
there's not really any greens, though usually I do like to pull greens down quite a bit. And same thing with a little bit of yellows down. But the main thing here is getting the blues down a bit. That's going to give us our nice kind of darker skies. All right, so let's go into details. Um, there's, let me zoom into this and just see if we want to do any bit of sharpening on the image. Okay, it actually looks really nice. It's already very detailed. I don't know that I want to increase this too much. Yeah, small details. Let's try and just increase large details by a bit, okay? And maybe medium a little bit. I'm keeping it very, very subtle, you notice. You notice, you notice, okay. Now, I'm gonna pull in this vignette and I'm gonna increase the size of the vignette. So I want this to actually drop. Let's see if we can't get this vignette just so I can see it better. Let's, let's increase the amount of it. Okay, so I'm gonna make it round. I'm gonna make the feather very deep and I'm gonna make it drop right into the center of the image, which it's currently doing. So now I'm gonna back it off a little bit to about there. Okay, now all I really wanna do at this point is let's go under film grain. I'm gonna start adding a bit of film grain to this. When it does this, you'll notice that if I zoom in, it's gonna re-render the film and give me a better look at it. So don't gauge the film look by just the standard preview when you are um, uh, zoom completely out. Actually zoom in and see what it looks like. And at that level, we see too much. Okay, so I'm gonna back this off a bit. I want it to be a roughly small size. And I want it to have a bit of roughness to it where it looks like film grain. It's not so uniform. So if we go all the way down, it's gonna look a bit too uniform. This looks really nice right there. It's kind of nice and subtle and I like it. Okay, Let's see if there's anything else we want. Let's look at drama. I kind of like adding a little bit of drama to this. For mood, I don't know that I want to choose a LUT to go into it. I think it looks great as is. I don't know that I need anything else, to be honest. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just look at the before and the after the image. Make sure that I'm happy with it. And what I might do here is raise the blacks just a bit, bring down the whites just a bit, and maybe also adjust the highlights a little. Okay, this is looking solid. Now, step three, when you are ready for saving this out, and if you wanna go through the professional stuff too, you can. There is super contrast, which I actually think might be useful. Let's actually go through this. You know what, let's go back to step two for just a second. Super contrast is a really fun tool to use um, that doesn't get enough love in Luminar AI, but basically what it allows you to do is to control the contrast of different areas of the image. So if I notice that the highlights have a little bit too much contrast or a little bit too bright, I can actually bring this up and I can change the highlight balance. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm gonna raise the highlight balance a bit to soften it up a little. I'm gonna to go to the midtones. We're gonna raise it and then start playing with the balance in the midtones. Okay, right about here, I really like the way that looks. You're gonna like the way you look. There's certain phrases that I feel like people have taken from the English vocabulary. It's not fair. That's one of them. Okay. Under shadow contrast, I'm going to leave it fairly low and push the shadow balance a little bit up. Okay. So with this, if I turn this on and off, what we basically get is a sort of refinement in that overall contrast of the image. And I like that a lot. I want that in this overall look. So this looks fantastic. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and save this. So step three, when you're happy with the look, save it as a new template. So we're gonna click save, and it's actually going to leave it under Noirscape Edit. So under templates, I should be able to find this right here in my templates. Okay, now I'm gonna rename this, and I'm gonna say, it's not really that anymore. It's Pi Cinematic Black and White. I dig. So now what I can do is go to these other images and I can just apply this black and white look to the other images and get to the exact same place, but in no time. Now this is my favorite thing to do when it comes to editing because now I can edit an entire series of images by just a single click. And what I'll do now is just tweak the crop of each one of these just to get it cropped correctly. And let me go ahead and just apply it to all of them too actually while I'm here. So I'm gonna apply this Pie cinematic. Looks pretty cool. Need to make little basic adjustments in each one of these. We'll do that. Okay, so last but not least, you're gonna make basic adjustments to each of them 
to essentially adjust any exposure if you need to. So we'll go to light and just pull up the exposure a bit on this one. I'm going to go ahead and fix the composition a little. Let's go ahead and just twist this back. So the horizon line is straight. That looks great. Okay, done with this one. Let's go to this guy. Oh, did that not apply the template? Let's try it one more time. Okay, same thing. And I even said at the beginning that I was actually going to take these to a square crop, right? So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do square crop. And let's set that. I like all of these, this, this set as a square crop crop. Okay, same thing here. Let's go ahead and go light. Okay, we're going to go into composition, same thing, make your tweaks. I'm going to go to the square, pull this up, kind of leading just a little bit of water, but focusing on the on the rocks. I dig it. Okay, now it's the same process for the other three, so let's just speed our way through this. Okay, I finished the last edit. So last but not least, I'm going to jump back to this catalog view. And what you'll notice what I talked about in that last tutorial was that any one of these images isn't that particularly interesting. But what we have here now is a cohesive look and a set of images that tell a complete story. And it's a story that would look very interesting, hung as a wall art display used for blog entries for whatever you would like. And you also have a template or a look that makes getting here that much quicker. Because from here, you just apply the template, adjust exposure, do your crop, and basically you're done. Last but not least, well, we're gonna export it and uh, we're done. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel so you guys are notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure to give the video a like as well. That helps us out quite a bit. In the meantime, I'll see you guys next time. There's another rhyme for you. Peace.